Hey, what's going on guys? So today we are tackling how you can learn new skills incredibly quickly. And over the course of this video, I'm gonna share a four step process that you can use to take any skill, whether it's related to school or your future career, or whether it's just a fun one like guitar or cooking and break that skill down so that you can learn as much as you need to about the most important parts and then start practicing them effectively so you can gain basic proficiency really, really fast. Now this process we're gonna talk about applies to any skill because at its core, skill development, whether it's really physical, like basketball or whether it's really mental like mathematics, it's all learning. As you intake information about the skill and as you practice it, you're forging new neural pathways in your brain, you're connecting them with other neural pathways and you're strengthening them over time. As you do this, you move through what's called the three-stage model of skill acquisition, which starts with the cognitive stage where you're just learning about the skill and you're just forming those neural pathways, and then moves into the associative stage where you're doing a lot more practice and now you're able to sort of self-reflect and pick out mistakes and change things based on those mistakes. And eventually you move into the autonomous stage. And at that point, you have mastered the skill and it's basically able to be done automatically. And this autonomous phase takes a really long time to get to. Mastery takes a lot of hours of of practice. But that doesn't mean you're doomed to spend dozens of hours in the beginning phases because if you know how to structure the learning and the practice processes the right way, you can make a surprising amount of progress in a very, very short period of time. In fact, in his book, The First 20 Hours, author Josh Kaufman argues that you can learn basic proficiency in almost any skill that exists in under 20 hours of dedicated practice. And his process for doing this breaks down into a series of four distinct steps. And in a second, we're going to go over those steps. But first, I want to issue you a bit of a challenge. If you're sitting there watching this video and you have a skill you've been wanting to learn, use this framework to create a plan for doing that. Once the video is over, take out a piece of paper and create a plan going through each of the steps and then start putting it into action. So the first step in Kaufman's process is to deconstruct the skill. Basically, you break it down into its component parts and then you prioritize those parts based on your particular goals within that skill area. Now, to give you an example, let's talk about playing the guitar. A lot of people want to play the guitar, but there are lots of different ways to play the guitar. There's tons of different musical genres. You might want to just play a few different songs, or maybe you want to be like Slash or like Dragon Force guitarists and be ripping solos all day long, right? These are very different skills. So by breaking it down into individual sub skills, chords, scales, picking technique, reading tabs, understanding musical intervals, you end up with a list of building blocks that you can then prioritize and take action on. The second step in Kaufman's process is the education step. Basically, at this point, you wanna take each subskill that you've prioritized and learn enough about it that you can practice well and identify your mistakes and self-correct. Now, notice I said enough about each subskill, not as much as you can about each subskill, because I know personally, I'm the kind of guy who will walk into Barnes and Noble and look at every single book on the shelf related to what I'm interested in and think, I should buy every single one here and read them all before getting started. And that's just not how good skill development works, especially if you wanna do it quickly. You need to learn just enough about each subskill so that you can start practicing, getting your hands dirty and making mistakes because then you're gonna know what you should correct. All right, step number three in the process is to eliminate any potential barriers to success or barriers to your progress in your practice. And in my mind, the most likely thing that's gonna get in the way of your practice is a lack of motivation in the long term. So find a way to motivate yourself on a constant basis. Maybe it's having an accountability partner, maybe it's joining a forum where you can talk about your interest, or maybe it's just making a record of every single day you practice so you can see a chain developing that you don't wanna break. All right, so skill has been deconstructed, learning has been done, and barriers have been sliced in half with a samurai sword. We are now on the fourth and final step of the process, which is simply to practice deliberately. In the first 20 hours, Josh Kaufman's rule is that you should practice deliberately until you've achieved your goals for each subskill that you prioritized or until you've hit 20 hours of dedicated practice. And what he recommends is that you actually practice by using a timer or a clock and track the amount of hours you put in. Because when you're practicing something difficult, it can be really, really easy to overestimate how much time you spent practicing. Now that we've gotten through that four step process, I want to give you a few additional tips you can use to make your skill development journey even more successful. And the first one is to identify the work of somebody who is a master or somebody who is where you want to be 
analyze that work as best as you can, and then try to imitate it. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, this is copying, this is ripping people off, but actually, as long as you're not passing off this work as your own, this is how a lot of people learn their skills. And in fact, in Japanese martial arts, there's a concept called shuhari that is exactly this. And in music, it's the same. The famous jazz trumpet player, Clark Terry, believed that imitation was in fact an essential part of becoming a great musician. And he told his students that music learning happens in a three-stage process which he called imitate, assimilate, and innovate. Here's what he said about the role of imitation. By imitating the players you love, you'll begin to understand the music on a deeper level and begin to see a personal sound develop in your own approach to improvisation. Questions that can't be answered by music theory or etude books, like how to play longer lines or how to articulate and swing, will reveal themselves as you start to imitate the masters. Part of the reason this tactic works so well is it gives you a method to go way, way beyond your comfort zone and your current level of skill. Because if you can take something that a master made and you can analyze it from every angle, you can probably recreate certain aspects of it even if you don't know exactly what you're doing or why you're doing it. Then later on, as you're kind of backfilling your knowledge by learning the theory and all the fundamentals, you're gonna be able to say, oh, that's why I did that, or that's how I did that. I didn't understand it at first, but now I get it. And I kind of have like a rung to pull myself up because I did that work in the first place. The Stanford mathematics professor Ravi Vakil called it backfilling, and here's how he described it in terms of mathematics. Mathematics is so rich and infinite that it is impossible to learn it systematically. And if you wait to master one topic before moving on to the next, you'll never get anywhere. Instead, you'll have tendrils of knowledge extending far from your comfort zone. Then you can later backfill from these tendrils and extend your comfort zone. Of course, another way to learn from the masters is to simply be taught by them, which is why another way you can really accelerate your skill development process is by finding a teacher or a coach or a course that you can take. Now, I know from personal experience, having a coach or somebody who can tell you your mistakes is probably the most valuable thing in the world. But you don't have to let geography be a limiting factor in your access to teachers because there are hundreds of thousands of tutorials and online courses that you can use for basically any skill that you're trying to learn. And one place where you can find those courses that I want to let you know about is Skillshare, who's actually the sponsor of this video. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community that has over 12,000 courses in a ton of different subjects. And I've actually been taking a few of those in After Effects animation, but they also have courses in photography, graphic design, logo design, and things like cooking, guitar, presentation skills. In fact, they have a presentation skills class from Simon Sinek, who gave probably my favorite TED Talk of all time. But one of the reasons I really like Skillshare is that it gives you the ability to get feedback from from both your teacher and from other people who are taking the same course. There's two ways it does this. Number one, below the videos in any course you're taking, there's a comment section. And if you ask a question, you can get an answer from the course instructor. But also, most of the courses on Skillshare have a participation component. Basically, there is a project section of the course where you can upload your own work for feedback. Now, a membership to Skillshare is normally around eight bucks a month, which is right around the same price as Netflix and potentially a lot more useful. But if you wanna get three months of completely unlimited use on Skillshare. You can get it for 99 cents by using the link in the description below, and I'll have a few more details about that at the end of the video. Before we end this video though, I've got three additional tips for you, and all three of them relate to making your practice sessions more effective and more useful. And the first one is to find a way to record some of the practice you do. Now you don't have to record all of it, but recording some of it is gonna allow you to analyze your performance, see the mistakes you're making, and make improvements. And this is something my skating coach actually told me to do. She said, bring your iPhone to the rink, set it up on a tripod and film yourself practicing the moves you have to practice for the competition. Because if you can't see what you're doing, you don't really know how to make improvements. My friend Martin also does this with Spanish practice. One thing he does is have an impromptu speech in Spanish with his webcam. So that way he can go back and analyze his accent, his rate of speech, if he made any grammatical errors, etc. Secondly, if you want to accelerate your development process and actually get good, you need to make time for hyper focus focused and honestly lengthy practice sessions. Now I was gonna say when I was writing the script that you could just do 20 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day of practice as long as it was consistent, but when I got to thinking, I couldn't think of a single skill that I have that I'm proud of, that I think I'm truly good at where I just put in 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day of practice. I mean, After Effects, public speaking, skateboarding, figure skating, all the things I think I'm pretty good at, I spent hours and hours 
of practice on, and each individual session was honestly quite lengthy. And lastly, as you practice, you wanna vary up the stakes. When you're learning a new subskill, you wanna start with low stakes, where you're in a very low stress situation, there's not much of a threat of consequence, and then move to higher stakes situations where there is some pressure. And video game design is a perfect example of this, because if you analyze almost any video game, as it teaches the player a new skill, it usually gives them a space where there's some isolated practice, where you can basically practice the skill with not much else going on, very little threats, the opponents aren't hitting back, and then once you've gotten it down there, you move it into an actual situation where the opponents do hit back or when things are happening faster and when there's very low margin for error or there's some consequences. If you look at real world skills, this principle applies just as well. I mean, look at learning a new language. When you know absolutely nothing, you need some low stress periods to drill flashcards or learn vocabulary, but then to really up your skills and solidify what you've learned, you might do something like scheduling a conversation with somebody on Skype or even going to a foreign country and talking with people face to face. Now, I know we went over a ton of different tips in this video, and because of that, there might be a temptation for you to wait for a perfect moment to start building your skill when you can plan everything out and when you can integrate every single tip. But if you take nothing else away from this video, just take this away. The best time to start learning a skill is now. Even if you have an imperfect implementation plan, even if you start really slowly, if you can start making some mistakes, start learning some initial foundational pieces of that skill, that's gonna help you build it into the future. So whatever it is, whatever you wanna learn, something career focused, something totally fun, make a plan for implementing it, use that four step process, and then just get started. Once again, I wanna give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is actually my first sponsored video so let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below but i'm a big fan of skillshare personally so it was a no-brainer for me and if you want to try it once again you can try that link in the description below for three months of unlimited use for just 99 cents or if you're on the site you can use the promo code beard when you sign up because hey it's me beyond that if you enjoyed this video i'd love to hear what you thought about it in the comments down below definitely ask me questions if you have them and i'll try to get them answered in future videos or in the comments themselves and also if you enjoyed this video give it a like to support this channel you can subscribe right there if you want to get new videos every single week on being more productive and improving your learning capabilities or you can click right down there if you want to watch another video see you in the next one